Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. Today we are going to learn how Regadinason or Lexis scan works. So let us begin. Regadinason produces coronary vasodilatation and increases coronary blood flow by activating A2 A adenosine receptor. Here is the chemical structure of uh, regadinosin. Before we go any further, let us look at the adenosine receptors in the body and their roles. There are adenosine 1, adenosine 2 which is subdivided into adenosine 2A and 2B and then we have adenosine 3 receptors scattered throughout, throughout the body. Adenosine 1 acts primarily on the AV conduction system by a negative chronotropic effect and negative inotropic effect. Whereas adenosine 2 is divided into adenosine 2A and adenosine 2B, adenosine 2A is a selective receptor that is heavily concentrated in the coronary arterial wall that causes a profound coronary vasodilatation and peripheral arterial vasodilatation. Whereas adenosine 2B is primarily located in the peripheral vascular system, it also dilates the peripheral arteries, it causes degranulation of the mast cells and it also causes bronchoconstriction. Now let us look at uh, adenosine 3 receptor. Adenosine 3 receptor just like adenosine 2B causes uh, degeneration of the mass cell and bronchoconstriction. Now with this in background let us look at some other drugs that we have used in nuclear stress tests to increase the coronary blood flow. The oldest of which is the dipyridamol. As you can see, the, the dipyridamol is converted into adenosine in the body and this adenosine acts on all the adenosine receptors that is adenosine 1, adenosine 2 and adenosine 3 receptors. As a result, it uh, activates the adenosine 2A and 2B receptors, the adenosine A1 and A3 receptors. Whereas caffeine and aminophilin block the effect of uh, adenosine and dipredamol on receptors. As you can see, the adenosine 3 receptors cause bronchoconstriction. Similarly, adenosine 2B cause bronchoconstriction and as a result, uh, the adenosine we used to use previously was prone for bronchospasm especially in patients with history of asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In contrast to that, let us look at uh, regadinoson. In contrast to that, let us look at uh, regadinoson. Regadinoson primarily activates adenosine 2A receptors which are predominantly located in the coronary vascular bed. By activating the adenosine 2 a receptors, it activates the adenylate cyclase which converts ATP into cyclic AMP which increases the production of a protein kinase which leads to, which leads to significant vasodilatation. Regadinoson works very quickly. It is injected as 400 micrograms or 0.4 milligrams intravenously over a period of just 10 seconds and it, the coronary vasodilatation takes peak uh, by about 30 seconds and it increases the coronary flow by almost 2 to 2.5 times the normal. And this effect lasts for about 2 minutes and there is a rapid decline in the action of this uh, regadinoson in the circulation. That is why majority of the symptoms last for less than 2 to 3 minutes. Let us look at some of the side effects of regadinoson. Previously when we were using adenosine, we saw a lot of symptoms related to slowing of the heart rate, drop in blood pressure and bronchospasm 
and majority of the symptoms are minimal in patients receiving regadinazone. Hypertension may be occasionally seen in these patients. Bronchospasm is less common. The occasionally, patients may have seizures. The most common symptoms include dyspnea, headache, flushing, chest pain, and some dizziness. But as I said, since this medicine's effect lasts for only two to three minutes, majority of the symptoms dissipate in two to three minutes after the administration of uh, regadinazone. We need to be aware of some of the contraindications for using regadinazone in performing nuclear stress tests. Patients with a second degree or third degree AV block or six sinus syndrome should not receive regadinazone. Again, regadinazone should not be used in patients with acute myocardial ischemia or acute coronary syndromes because of uh, increased blood supply in the normal blood vessels. There could be a coronary steal which can aggravate myocardial ischemia and it can actually result in myocardial infarction in some patients. One of the antidotes that we can use to reverse the effects of uh, regadinazone is uh, amenophilin and amenophilin should be always readily available when we are performing the nuclear stress test. Uh, amenophilin can be given uh, in a dose of uh, 100 milligrams uh, IV bolus if the patients develop symptoms uh, of ischemia or bronchospasm. Here are two nuclear stress test images from two different uh, patients undergoing regadinosone nuclear stress testing and here you can see there is normal myocardial perfusion during uh, pharmacological stress compared with the rest images in this uh, study and in this study we can see there is reduced circulation in the infralateral region of the left ventricle during exercise which improves during resting images and this is depicted here in what is called the, the target view or uh, perfusion view where the blue represents decreased myocardial perfusion and here you can see there is a significant area of uh, decreased myocardial perfusion during pharmacological stress compared to the rest images where there is a significant improvement. This is called the reversible ischemia involving the inferior and the lateral walls of uh, the myocardium and this is a positive regadinazone nuclear stress test. These patients uh, would benefit from going cardiac catheterization and coronary intervention if indicated. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very quick overview of uh, regadinazone and adenosine receptors, their roles and how regadinazone works uh, in patients undergoing nuclear stress testing. Thank you so much for watching this video and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time.